morning. Welcome to the USS Kraken. I'm your captain, Rockin' Robbins. This morning we'll be doing the Dicko Kane Targeting Technique Seminar. Let's get to work, shall we? Bearing 190, he's back there somewhere. Let's check our let's check our nav map. Uh, there we see our target. What's our first piece of information we need? We need the speed. We need the course. Make sure your tool helper is open. That helps give you compass roses on your ruler and on your protractor. Let's uh, pick our pencil. Take our clock out. And get a timing on this guy. What we're going to do here is we're going to get him two positions which are three minutes apart. So click on them and start to watch. Do a little time compression to shorten things up. One minute. Two minutes. So we know now his speed is 12 knots. We'll leave that open like that just so we can remind ourselves in case we need to, but we won't need to because we're about to set that in the TDC. Take your speed and set it for 12 knots. Send it to the TDC. Check it to make sure that the speed is entered. We're there. Back to our nav map. Now we'll back off just a little bit here. Next thing we need to know is this course. This is pretty easy to determine. We'll take the ruler tool, start at the first mark, extend it through the second mark, and him, of course. Read off his course. Look like his course is a good 25 degrees. The reason we look at his course is because we're going to have to extend this. Let's zoom out a little bit. Take our map out. We want to extend his course at 25 degrees past our mode. Click. That's his track. If nothing else changes, he'll go right up that track. Alright, now we need to be approaching this track at a right angle. The easiest way to determine that is go ahead and click on your protractor tool. Click it on the track. Drag up along the track to pretty close to where your intercept point's going to end up having to be. Click a second time extend that out and you can see the 90 degree angle right there. We're not quite right on the intercept. Out to here. It's nice to have the intercept point ahead of you. Here's 90 degrees. There we go. Now we can read the course off on our protractor. On our compass rows. The course will be 295. Let's do that. Let's come to course 295. Let's also go to periscope depth. Would be a fine idea, wouldn't it? 293 it says, 292 it says, not close enough. Periscope depth. Next piece of information that would be helpful is how close do we want to be to the track? Now, what you're looking at right now is the 3,000 yard bearing plotter. Uh, this works in 1.5 for the 
fleet boat only. It doesn't work for the U-boat. We're working on a version for the U-boat plus the fleet boat, but I got some scaling problems with the U-boat. This works just beautiful with the fleet boat, however. 3,000 yard bearing plotter. If you don't have that working, we can cheat on it a little bit. Let's take our compass out and find out what range we want to start shooting from. It'll be inside the circle. Let's just draw a thousand yard circle. And we're going to say, we'll be inside that circle and we'll begin shooting. We have a huge, huge lead on this guy. So we can approach slowly. We're at five knots right now. Let's drop it back a little bit. I don't like to stop in an approach. That's unrealistic. I know we can do it in a game and not have any consequences. In a real submarine, maintaining depth at no speed is almost impossible. So, just to keep some semblance of reality, I like to keep the speed up to a half a knot at least. Uh, we'll see how things are shaking out right now. Notice I have the periscope down. We don't need anything but the sonar range at this point. There's no sense tipping our hand early. Uh, there's nothing we know that uh, that will be helpful by putting up the scope right now. Let's plan our attack. Set up our TDC right now before he's anywhere near us. Okay. Here's the plan. This guy is going to be right here. We're pretty close to that when a torpedo hits him. He's going 12 knots. We're going to shoot fast torpedoes. I'm going to give him a 15 degree lead angle. Now, this is just a rule of thumb. There's nothing special about it. You can pick 10, you can pick 20. It really doesn't matter. 15 degrees will hit us pretty close to the zero mark. Here's the uh, 15 degrees before he gets there means we're going to be going left. 15 degrees is going 5, 10, 15 degrees. We're going to be shooting at a bearing of 3, 4, 5. Let's go to our TDC. So here's what happens. Point your periscope to 3, 4, 5. He just saw him blink on and off there. And click the mouse. This keeps the periscope from moving when you move your mouse. Also lets you enter things into the computer. First thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what our angle on the bow should be. And a right angle attack, your angle on the bow is 90 minus your distance away from your zero bearing mark. So we're going to be 15 degrees away from that zero bearing mark. 90 minus 15 is 75. Now he's coming from the left. He's coming from port. That means his angle on the bow will be starboard, which makes sense because when you rotate your angle on the bow, adjustment. You can see his stern to the left and the bow to the right, the same way he's coming at you from left to the right. And 90 minus 15 is 75, so we're going to our angle on the bow. When we shoot, it's going to be 75 degrees starboard. Find that. Now we're going to click the send button twice. Watch why. Here's click number one. There's click number two. Did you see the arrow move there? I don't know why it's necessary. It is. Click the on angle on the bow and on your bearing measurement. Click twice. All right. Let's now set the bearing. Click your range button here. This is the hated stated meter button. We're not going to touch that. First thing we're going to do is come up here to this little plastic triangle right here. This plastic triangle has the hairline on it where you can read your range on the inside scale there. We're just going to grab that plastic triangle and drag it down as far as we can. You can't drag it down any further than that. It points to about like, 1250 yards, something like that. We're going to release it. Now we're going to press the send, the send range and bearing the TDC button. We're going to do that twice too. See how that moves the second time? That's really strange. Something I haven't seen documented. But now we have the bearing that we're going to shoot in the TDC. We have just a fake range out there so that we can check it with our attack screen. And we have our speed, which we put first at 12 knots. 
Let's go to the attack screen and just see what we're looking at. Okay, attack screen. Now here is the torpedo track that I told you about. And with our lead, we're actually going to hit the ship when it gets to 6 degrees. We're not going to hit him at zero. But that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, with the American torpedo, if you hit it exactly zero, you're going to get a lot of duds. This prevents some duds by introducing just a little bit of angle into our calculation. We're going to shoot, remember, when, he, when he's at 345. Let's go to the, uh, go to the, uh, the nav map. Okay, so we're going to shoot at the bearing at 345, which we just happen to have a line there. We're going to shoot when he's here, and the torpedo will hit when he is here. Because the lead angle is built into the periscope, we're actually going to point the periscope at the target and aim at the part of the ship we want to hit. We'll do that later. guy in close. last thing we have to set is the depth of the torpedo. Yes, you can leave it at default. I find it's a lot better if you set it to just, uh, say, five feet less than the keel depth. We're going to do better than that. We're going to set it a couple feet less than the keel depth and set it for magnetic impulse. I have a lot of luck with that. This is late in the war. Um, so, early in the war, maybe that's not a great strategy. Maybe you should set it for five feet less than the keel depth. Set it for contact and magnetic and take your contact explosion if you get it. If you get a deep runner, you'll take the magnetic explosion. It's just a crap shoot there. Up scope. And there's scope around. If you're a U-boat guy, you'll know that that would be bad news with a U-boat. With a fleet boat, it doesn't matter that much. Well, let's take a look at that. He looks like he's inside our track a little bit. We'll go into reverse. He's not far enough off to worry about. Let's identify him. Shortcut, shift I for identify target. Identify our target there, guy. Crew's a little slow this morning. It's early morning. Our crew just woke up. Ah, large modern tanker down scope.
six torpedoes locked and loaded. Looking back to the position keeper here. Now we have the position keeper off. Don't turn that thing on. Let's get a bearing here. Oh yeah. Backing up just a little bit. Wanna get at least 500 yards range. We're fine. Getting close, let's race the scope and do some firing. What do we gotta do first? That's right, we gotta open the tubes. <laughs> we just fired one torpedo. Let's do something different. We just blew the attack, didn't we? Let's just show how forgiving the Dicko chain technique is. We point up here, we'll go to our send range button. We haven't changed the angle on the bow at all, have we? Doesn't really matter, we'll hit every shot. Shoot the bow. Shoot the crane. Shoot the radar. Shoot at that. And we'll pull all the way back and we'll shoot pretty close to the stern here. Now this will cause their torpedoes to miss a little bit forward. Let's go to our F6 screen. Here's our very first torpedoes. Boom. That was the first torpedo we shot. stern we hit with all the other torpedoes. Not bad for a blown attack, is it? And our guy seems to have a problem with a lot of torpedoes in him. Well, sorry I couldn't hit exactly where I was supposed to hit. That's the way it goes sometimes when you're doing a demo. But uh, we'll put this one up there and we'll make another one that works exactly the way it's supposed to work. Oh, our guy seems to have a problem. We'll leave him there. Have a great day, folks. I'm going to be redoing this, but I'll go ahead and post this one because it did come out relatively well, and it shows you what happens if you have a problem. Really, with Dick O'Kane, your angle on the bow was the only thing that was wrong when we changed our aiming point, and it really didn't matter. We hit the thing with five out of six shots. That's pretty okay. Goodbye.